Sri Aurobindo came to tell the world of the beauty of the future that must be realized. He came to give not a hope, but a certitude of the splendor towards which the world moves. The world is not an unfortunate accident. It is a marvel which moves towards its expression. The world needs the certitude of the beauty of the future, and Sri Aurobindo has given that assurance. From the Mother on 27 November 1971. For all problems of existence are essentially problems of harmony. They arise from the perception of an unsolved discord and the instinct of an undiscovered agreement or unity. To rest content with an unsolved discord is possible for the practical and more animal part of man, but impossible for his fully awakened mind, and usually even his practical parts only escape from the general necessity either by shutting out the problem or by accepting a rough, utilitarian, and unillumined compromise. For essentially, all nature seeks a harmony, life and matter in their own sphere, as much as mind in the arrangement of its perceptions. There is nothing mind can do that cannot be better done in the mind's immobility and thought-free stillness. When mind is still, then truth gets her chance to be heard in the purity of silence. Man, the individual, has to become and to live as a universal being. His limited mental consciousness has to widen to the superconscient unity in which each embraces all. His narrow heart has to learn the infinite embrace and replace its lusts and discords by universal love and his restricted vital being to become equal to the whole shock of the universe upon it and capable of universal delight. His very physical being has to know itself as no separate entity but as one with and sustaining in itself the whole flow of the indivisible force that is all things. His whole nature has to reproduce in the individual the unity, the harmony, the oneness in all of the supreme existence, consciousness, bliss. Watch the two indignantly righteous. Before long, you will find them committing or condoning the very offense which they have so fiercely censured. The individual cannot be perfect until he has surrendered all he now calls himself to the Divine Being. There is nothing small in God's eyes, let there be nothing small in thine. He bestows as much labor of divine energy on the formation of a shell as on the building of an empire. For thyself, it is greater to be a good shoemaker than a luxurious and incompetent king. Love and serve men, but beware lest thou desire their approbation. Obey rather God within thee. To be one in all ways of thy being with that which is the highest, this is yoga. To be one in all ways of thy being with that which is the all, that is yoga. To be one in thy spirit and with thy understanding and thy heart and in all thy members with the God in humanity, this is yoga. To be one with all nature and all beings, this is yoga. All this is to be one with God in His transcendence and His cosmos and all that He has created in His being. Because from Him all is and all is in Him and He is all and in all. And because He is thy highest self and thou art one with Him in thy spirit and a portion of Him in thy soul and at play with Him in thy nature. And because this world is a scene in His being in which he is thy secret master and lover and friend and the Lord and sustainer of all thou art. Therefore is oneness with him the perfect way of thy being. Everyone has in him something divine, something his own, a chance of perfection and strength in however small a sphere which God offers him to take or refuse. 
The task is to find it, develop it, and use it. The chief aim of education should be to help the growing soul to draw out that in itself which is best and make it perfect for a noble use. Do not belong to the past dawns, but to the noons of future. Success must not elate our minds, nor failure discourage us. Try to see God in all, and the self in all. Put faith in God and act.